Okay, guys, I wanted to talk about copper jacketing. We all know that in the handgun and, and rifle world, that 22s, that once you get a high, high velocity with the 22, it typically will have a copper jacket on it. So here's a 22 round here. At about 12, 50 feet per second, somewhere in there, give or take, you know, 50 feet per second, plus or minus. Typically what happens is you'll end up with something like this. You'll have a 22 Magnum right here with a copper jacket. And the reason for the copper jacket is because lead can only take so much velocity to a point where if you push it too fast, what happens is it shreds itself inside the barrel and it strips itself even though it puts the rifling on the bullet here. What it does is it starts to strip and it spins too much and uh, so the bullet comes out with a bunch of lead powder with it because it's just going way too fast. So that's the reason for the copper jacketing is to give it some hardness. Same thing in the air gun world. If you got too light of a pellet and it's lead, it can actually destroy itself before it comes out of the barrel because of the simple fact you're giving it too much pressure. And uh, the pellet is just too thin in the skirt area right here to handle all that pressure. Uh, like, for instance, a 20-foot pound air rifle, sometimes uh, it's good or higher. 20 foot pounds or higher, it's good to have pellets like these. Uh, the copper jacketed ones, if you're, especially if you're use, using lighter pellets, an 8.8 .8 grain right here is considered light for a 20 foot pound uh, spring piston air rifle. And that's, beca that's because of the fact too that a 20 foot pound to 25 foot pound 177 spring piston air rifle is going to have very very high velocities so you want to increase the weight so for instance this 8.8 .8 grain so I recommend anytime you're going 20 foot pounds and higher you should stay around eight and a half grains or higher you don't want to shoot them light ones because they're getting destroyed before they come out of the barrel and then that way you don't have to deal with the mock speeds either the turbulence that the pellet has uh, from the Mach speed and suddenly dropping down to subsonic where it starts to the waves behind it starts starts to uh, make it uh, yaw a little bit kind of like shutting off the boat engine when you're coming into shore you know how you shut off the boat engine and you coast and then all of a sudden a big wave hits you from behind well that's kind of like what a, a bullet or a pellet has when it transitions from uh, mock speed down to subsonic as you get this other wave that hits it from behind that catches up so essentially the bullets flying it's doing really good then when it drops down to subsonic the other wave hits it from the tail and then makes it yaw like that and that's why you have accuracy problems uh, not only in air rifles but 22s for instance the really high velocity rounds uh, if you go further out you'll find that the subsonic ones work better because they don't get hit in the rear end right here by the second wave they still have the first wave because they're out running it so that's kinda like something uh, uh, you guys have to know too is how mock speed works and how you have problems when whenever a bullet transitions uh, from mock speed down to subsonic you start to have trouble and that goes with any rifle any rifle any caliber you're going to notice some accuracy differences uh, transitioning from uh, mock speed down to uh, subsonic but anyway I just thought I'd talk to you about jacketing and stuff how important it is and some people wonder why why is there copper jacketing on bullets and stuff and that's because you don't want to destroy the bullet when it has too much power for the lead so copper is harder than lead and it's able to put up with them higher pressures so anyway hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching you guys